Today's video is going to be a combination of shocking, distressing, and fascinating. Variance is extreme in poker. We think that we understand it, but ladies and gents, I put it to you that we truly don't. It depends what format of the game you're playing, but in some formats of this game that many of you are grinding, I think you're truly underestimating just how good or bad you can run over small stretches or even medium ones, or even ones that you might consider quite big. I'm going to be comparing using a variance calculator in this video, games like Full Ring Live Cash where variance is much lower, and then games like Six Max Zoom Online where variance is a lot higher. And I think by the end of this video, you're going to be left in a bit of a bewildered but curious state, and you're going to start to see variance like you've never seen it before. If you've never sat down with a proper poker variance calculator and put in some time, this video is going to be a shortcut to helping you understand exactly what poker can have in store for you and what you should expect over the coming weeks months and years of your poker career. If you like this video, you like our stuff, it's carrotcorner.com for more from me. Now let's get to understanding what variance is really about. All right guys, so this is the poker variance calculator over on primedope.com. I think it's created maybe by this chat, Mr. Arvid Clone. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. This name looks a bit like a shocked emoji, which is really fitting for the fact that this video is going to shock you. We're going to get really shocking at the start, and then we're going to move towards slightly less shocking and more reassuring and comforting. We're going to look at the most volatile games first. So let me just go over some of these fields down here. This is your win rate. By win rate, it doesn't mean what you see on your poker tracker. When you look at your poker tracker graph or stats over 160,000 hands that you have in your database, you're not looking at your win rate. You're looking at an observed win rate. You're looking at this number here. Your true win rate and your observed win rate will converge if you play infinity hands. If you play a normal sample of like 100,000 or 200,000 hands that, you know, a recreational non-full-time poker player might play in a year or in six months or something like that, you're going to see a bit of fluctuation between those stretches. So I've coached people that play 200 Zoom on PokerStars, which is a game that is extremely volatile. When you play that game without selecting for time of day or without pool selecting, you're battling with some pretty tough regs that would otherwise be playing high stakes if it was running. You know, you're going to have to call off your stack with the right blockers. You're going to have to blast off in loads of spots. The fish in that pool are a bit more active and aggressive than the passive fish that you'd see in like a, a game like 100 Russian cash on GG or 50 Russian cash on GG or 25 NL on PokerStars or something like that. Games like that tend to have a standard deviation, which is basically the measure of volatility in the game that's pretty high. So it says here that no limit hold'em 6 max standard deviations are between 75 and 120 BB. But the tougher the game you're playing in, the more reggae and GTO like the game you're playing in, the more aggression in the stacks flying about that there's going to be, and the closer to 120 this is going to be. Many of you will be able to find this stat in your poker tracker if you played a big enough sample, and you might see that it's actually 70, or 73, or 80, or something like that. And what that means is that you're probably playing in a game that's more placid, like a microstakes game or something like that, or you're playing a style of poker that's passive and risk averse. So I've definitely seen stuck break-even players who have a really flat green line, losing red line and winning blue line, that classic shape of graph that we've talked about a lot on this channel in previous videos. And their standard deviation is quite low because they're just avoiding risk but to the detriment of their true win rate. And very often, if you're playing a low variance style like that, your true win rate and your observed win rate, they tend to converge a bit faster, but it really does hinder how good your results can be over the long term. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by simulating like a normal stretch of hands that you guys might play in a couple of months, right? If you're not a full-time poker player, it might take you two months or three months to play 50,000 hands. Now, that's a long period of time in real life, like going all the way from September through to December or something like that. That feels like a bit of a stint, right? When I think back to the 23rd of August, which would be three months before I'm recording that, that's like the weather was good, I was playing a lot of golf, it was summer, and it just feels like an alien world. Okay, the weather wasn't good because it's Scotland, but in principle it should have been, should have been reasonable. But that feels like a different like time altogether to me. So three months for you guys, 50k hands if you're not a full-time pro or something, that's a long time in poker, right? So let's calculate it. So when we press this button here, it generates a bunch of random samples. So there is a faint black line here, which is the zero mark. And I've plugged in a win rate, a true win rate of 3 BB. So all of these players that have been simulated here are winning at 3 BB per 100 over infinity hands. But over this 50k stretch, you can see that it's really volatile. These bold lines here, this one at the top and this one at the very bottom, are the best and worst lines of a thousand trials. And the faint lines that you're seeing here are 20 random lines that we've simulated. 
So what we can see is that while there are people who are winning 4,336 big blinds, so that's basically like 40 stacks or $8,000 and 200 zoom, there are also people who are down like nearly the same amount. Between that, there are a bunch of people who are just up a little bit. Lots of these people are break even. Lots of these people are losing. If you see someone post the sample and that person is purporting to be like a poker coach or something like that and they're saying, look at my results and I've played 45,000 or 50,000 hands in this game and they happen to be winning, what you have to remember is that that means basically nothing. Because if you are actually a full-time professional poker player and I would say that the highest volume guys that I teach probably play something like 800,000 hands a year or something like that, that's 16 different samples like this. So how easy would it be to just pick the best one and be like, oh look, I'm crushing, or pick the worst one and be like, oh look, I'm getting smashed for 7 BB per 100. In a game that's volatile, that's up at like 110 standard deviation, and if you are playing really aggressive poker, if you're playing something near GTO, you will have a really high standard deviation like this. If you're playing very passively, then you might not. But if you're playing kind of quote-unquote proper poker like this, then yeah, it gets wild reg versus reg. So if we simulate more of these stretches, you're going to see the pattern that slightly more of these lines are winning than losing, but over 50k hands, honestly, like anything can happen. So I'll take this quick interval here just to explain in this video something I've explained in the comments section a few too many times, something I'm getting a bit tired of having to explain, which is that when I post results, I want to have a really big sample. I don't want to be a coach that posts a 50 or 60 or 70k sample. I've played about this is kind of embarrassing, but I've played less than 50,000 hands over the last few years. I only play poker when I'm creating content. However, as I've explained, that's about to change. I've now committed to grinding out big samples at 100 Russian cash, then 200 Russian cash, and then hopefully dabbling in some higher stakes games as well. That's my roadmap for the next few years. And when I do post a sample, like I did back in the day, I used to have a 500,000 hand graph on my website, which I took down because I thought it was a bit dated. But when I do post a sample, it's going to be a load of hands. And you guys should honestly not worry too much about how you're doing in a game like this. If you are playing a highly volatile game, don't worry about your results over these samples. Just keep working away, keep plugging, keep grinding. Make sure that you're rolled but don't freak out if you happen to lose or break even over a stretch like this. So this one is a bit more controlled, this trial, because no one's really losing heavily. There are some guys that are winning like 65 buy-ins, which is really nice here, 6,500 big blinds. But if we keep calculating this again and again, you can see that there will be people running bad. So if you've had a really bad, let's say, quarter of the year, like a bad three-month period or a bad six-month period where you're like, man, I thought I was good at this game, but actually things are just going terribly, or maybe you're even a guy that can only play like 15,000 hands a month because it's taken you, you know, you're working on other things, you've got a family, you've got a job, whatever, then it could take you like a few months to, to do this. And then over a few months, you have this horrible graph and you're like, man, I thought I was getting better at this game. And you might be getting better at this game, but Variance is just doing this to you. So let's see what happens if we make this sample bigger. 100,000 hands, six digits, right? That's a big sample for a game like 200 Zoom. No, it's not. It's not. Look at this poor guy. This poor guy here did as bad as the worst 1,000 trials. We just like ran so terribly there with this line that we managed to generate a line that was as bad as the very worst one out of 1,000 trials. This guy is like really having a bad day at the office. But as you can see, plenty more losing graphs. Yes, it's more likely that you win. So now what we're seeing is that there are more lines above the line than below the line and that these lines are going further above the line on average. So if we just keep simulating this, here we go, like some real crushing samples now. This is beginning to fall into shape. But again, there's, it's still very possible that you break even over this sample. Okay, well, what if we double it? What if we looked at 200,000 hands? So now we're beginning to see something resembling order. Not accurate win rate, not at all. We're not looking at anything accurate here because there's still a very wide spread between the best line. This guy won four and this guy won 130, but they're the same level of player. Let's just stress that again. Over a 200,000 hand period, which is like three months or something for a pro, this pro won four buy-ins and this pro won 131 buy-ins. That's insane. That's actually crazy. When you look at that, that's the difference between making 26K at 200 zoom and making $800. 26K, $800, same person, same win rate. It's scary, right? This guy got crushed. It's the worst one over a thousand, but that could be you.
you could be the one guy in a thousand that just gets annihilated even though you're a good player because you know make no mistake 3 bb per 100 in a game like this is really impressive these days that's not a bad win rate at all now if you're a break even player say that your true win rate is break even you might think that you're an absolute loser or you might think that you're a god because you play this sample and you're like look i won 14k at 200 zoom look at me or you might post and be like okay i'm quitting poker i'm down 100 buy-ins but you're actually a break-even player because when you're break-even in a really high standard deviation game, it's crazily volatile. What can you do about this? How can you make your results more likely to reflect your true win rate? Well, what you can do is you can get your true win rate up. Now imagine you were a crusher. You were winning at 7 BB per 100 in a really volatile game. Well, it's now becoming quite difficult for you not to win. But this poor sod still only won 550 big blinds. That's $1,000 at 200 zoom despite being one of the greatest players in that pool ever. Greatest player in the pool, break even over 200k. That's only a 1 in 20 thing, right? That isn't like the very worst one. So I hope this is kind of scaring you, because I want this to shock you. I want you to understand that while as you get better at poker, it does become more and more likely that you win. In order to get something really concrete in a game like this, you need a very big sample. So I said I would endeavor to play 400,000 hands in each of these pools as I work my way up. That's my challenge over the next few years. What does that look like? Well, let's hope I've got a bigger win rate, right? Let's even bump it up to like four. Now, if it's a really tough game, it's hard to have like a six or seven BB win rate, but let's shoot for this guy a little bit here. Let's say we had a four BB win rate. Oh my God. Oh my God, man. I could play 400,000 hands in a really tough pool like this with a high volatility standard deviation. Remember, we're not talking about 100 Russian cash here. We'll look at that in a minute. We're talking about 200 zoom or 500 zoom. And I could lose over 400,000 hands as a 4BB winner. And then it's kind of scary, right? Because it's like, well, you've posted your results and your results look like you're just a break-even slash losing player because you were like these 2 in 20. This guy got hammered, actually. It's insane. And that took you a year to do or a year and a half to accumulate all of those hands because you had other stuff going on and it makes you look like a loser. Even though you're a 4BB winner and this is why I don't fucking post results over 50k or 100k and why no coach should do that. It's insane. Because if you run like shit, people don't understand variance. And when you put that out, they go, look, here's my sample. Look, I, I just barely broke even. I won like a little bit over the last year of playing 400k hands. It's like, well, this guy can't coach me. This guy's terrible. But variance is insane, man. And this is kind of what the trolls in the comments don't understand when they want to scrutinize small samples. This is what they don't understand when they think that like there's credibility in any sample size. There's not. This gets really scary at the standard deviation. So if you're playing in a game that's really, really swingy, where you have a small edge, anything can happen even over really big looking samples. So let's play a million hands. Is that enough zeros? I think that's a million. Yeah, six zeros and a one. Pretty sure that's a million. Doesn't this fill you with fear? Like if you're a pro to over a million hands, that's like a whole year or maybe like two years, depending on your volume. One stretch, you might win. That's 42k at 200 zoom. 42k over like two years that's terrible that you can barely you could just work at mcdonald's and almost make that or you might be one of the best players in the pool you're making a 130k which is still like arguably you could do better in many other walks of life but that's like a hell of a difference from this so this is in big blinds so making 40k down here or 130k up here same player same sample terrifying harrowing you could say this is borderline harrowing kind of stuff if you think you want to be an online 6 max pro that's playing tough online games, you need to understand that you are letting variance decide your fate. You're not going to be able to turn to your spouse. Don't show this video to your spouse because it's going to put them off the idea of you being a pro. But you know, you're going to have to turn to them and say, listen, honey, I may make 16 grand this year or I might make 100 and we don't know. And it's like, well, that's not very good. So why do I coach? Why is it that I chose this path first and foremost of putting out content and selling courses on Carrot Corner and being the educator of the game and trying to be the internet's academic educational guy for poker? The reason I made that choice is that I understood well the impact that Variance was having on my mental health when I played higher volume. It was honestly really hard. And yeah, I'm nervous about this challenge I've given myself where I'm going to start playing a lot more poker again because I'm aware that you can be on one of these different roller coasters. Now, let's look at the game I'm starting at in the challenge, right? That I've been posting a lot of footage from and stuff. And this is a game that I coach a lot and I've chosen it deliberately because I coach it a lot and a lot of you guys play this game. So let's go down in standard deviation now 
for like 100 Russian cash, which is still a fast fold pool. If you're playing proper aggressive poker, I think you'll have a standard deviation of about 90. And let's bump this win rate up because I want to beat this for like nearly double digits, right? So let's say I'm trying to win at 8 BB per 100 and the standard deviation is 90 now and I'm going to play 400,000 hands. How accurate is this? This is going to be much brighter, guys. Don't worry. Okay, that looks much better. So now playing with a really big win rate in a game with a lower standard deviation, we're now incredibly likely to come out on top. So the reason I'm picking this challenge, one of them, is that because of my understanding of variance, I know that if I can get a really big post rake win rate and the rake is big so it won't be like really easy, then I can protect myself from the shitstorm of just running terribly in like 200 zoom or something over 200,000 hands and having a graph that makes it look like I'm really bad at poker to the person who doesn't understand variance. So what does this say about what you guys are going to do? Enough about me and my sort of aims and what I'm doing. What about you? What game should you play in? You should play in a game where you can have a win rate that's massive. You shouldn't try and play in a game where you have a 2 BB win rate, in my opinion, because if you do, you're just making yourself a slave to variance. If you can get close to a double digit win rate and people can do this live, we'll look at live in a minute, but in like live 1, 2, 2, 5 with reasonable game selection or even without, you can have 15, 20 BB per 100 easy. Like that's possible. I've worked with live pros that do that year in, year out, and there's still fluctuation there, but I've worked with people that do that. But if you're playing online, honestly, really, truly try and find a site that's soft. Try and find games that are full of fish. Try and table select as much as is possible and is ethical and try to get something close to a double digit win rate and then play a big sample in that game. Don't just work your way up the ladder clicking the poker stars lobby like it's the levels of a computer game without having any idea what you're getting yourself in for. You might run good at 200 zoom or 500 zoom or something over 100k or two. You might think that you're deity, but you can also get completely wrecked. Whereas if you play in a game that's a bit more stable, if you site select intelligently or you find good live games, you can have a double digits win rate and you can truly protect yourself from the shitstorm of variance. So game selection is just so huge. I can't stress that enough. Now, there's still going to be variation here. Like I could significantly underperform in this challenge. You guys could play for a couple of years and be anywhere in this spread. But as we keep clicking this button for a really high win rate player, we can see that this is what we're talking about. This is what we want. This is what you want to show your spouse. You want to say, these are the spreads of my possible results. Listen, honey, there's going to be a bit of fluctuation here. But overall, by and large, you can be assured that it's very unlikely for me to not make a good bunch of money over the next year playing in this game with this big win rate. So that's what you want to aim to do. What if you are a live player then? Well, now your standard deviation is going to go down even further. It's going to be like 70 or something like that. And now your win rate could be like 16 BB per 100. The trouble is that now your sample is going to drop because you can't multi-table live. You can't sit there in a swivelly office chair just going between all the tables. Imagine you could do that fold here, call here, check here, like a multi-tabling octopus with tentacles in each table. Tentacle flicking chips into the pot. You guys can picture the poker octopus in the middle of the card room. The big light on it. It's the star player. It's got like eight whole cams with the whole cards and the tentacles and the suckers. Suckers getting stuck to the chips and chips not being able to get the chips off the suckers of the tentacles. It's a bit of a nightmare being the poker octopus. But man, what a dream that would be. But we can't do that. So volume's restrained. And what do live players play? They play like 30 hands an hour. They play 40 hours a week. So that's like 1,200 hands per week times 50. It's like 60,000 hands a year, something like that. So what does this look like if you're like a full-time live player? Again, really good. Even though this sample is tiny now, compared to the 400k sample we looked at previously, it's pretty damn impossible for you to lose as a live player. So if you're a live player and you've played for a whole year and you've lost that year, you don't have a 16 BB per 100 win rate. As the win rate gets bigger, the chances of you losing with that win rate become infinitesimally small when you're in a low standard deviation game like this. The two impactful things that make you safe over a small sample here are standard deviation and win rate. And this one is low for a live player and this one is high. The reason this one is low, by the way, that live games are not very volatile, is that there are loads of fish just limp calling and folding the flop and people aren't putting you to the test or tripling off and you don't have to do weird stuff with third pair blockers for your stack. Not that often anyway. So live players have it easy. The only problem is they have to sit there and catch moths in their mouth for like six hours a day. Just sit there like... Like that Yo Viral guy. You seen him on, on Game of Gold? He's just like... The amount of moths that man has swallowed in his life. It doesn't bear thinking about. Like he goes for like a scan one day and the doctor's like, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but you've got 149 moths in your stomach and your intestines. Anyway, I digress. 
this is cool this is stable this is fine we're okay with this so what we're really learning is like what is a viable way to approach a professional poker career and what's not what's not really viable unless you're a bit of a thrill junkie and you're happy with that level of volatility and this is all risk reward you know if you're happy with high volatility then sure play like 500 zoom and try and grind it out over a million hands with a two big blind win rate but that could go a number of different ways or find a good live game and sit there and print money with a 16 bb per 100 win rate basically never have a terrible stretch like have it okay when you're a live player like let's say you are this purple line here i bet this part felt really bad because that was like a few months of break even and losing it's like two months of losing it's like what's going on i thought i was a winner i've lost in february and i've lost in march that feels bad but there's very rarely more than that we keep generating this live players graph it's kushti man you guys say Kushti? Kushti in Scotland means it's like comfortable and there's like there's no problem with it. And then going back and comparing that to the guy with a 3 BB win rate that plays 60,000 hands at 115 standard deviation at 200 zoom. What a fucking mess. Look at that now. Do you want that? Is that what you want? I don't think that's what you want. So I think we should probably game select if we want to reduce variance. And the reason we're reducing variance, by the way, or trying to, isn't just that we want stability. And we'd like to know how much we're going to make in a year. That'd be nice if you're a professional. You want to know what your fucking salary is. Imagine you turned up at a job and they were like, well, we might pay you 7k this year. We might pay you six figures. It depends on the role of this RNG. Now, would you like the job? You'd say, go fuck yourself, wouldn't you? But the other reason, other than just like sensible stability and being able to plan how you're going to pay for electricity, that you might want to reduce variance is mental game. When you're playing in a pool like this, and let's trace one of these lines, right? Let's go for this guy, this purple line. This guy didn't even make it this far. He probably got to here and he was just like, man, this is going badly. A lot of these guys that I teach are just like, I don't want to play this game anymore. And he just changed game or he just like stopped playing for a while or something like that. That happens all the time. And this is only 60k hands. So if amateur players quit after like 40k hands of running bad, which happens all the time, let's go back up to like 400k now. Imagine you're a pro and it was really hard to see, right? But let's just say that you're like one of these lines here. There's going to be periods here where you just absolutely downswing beyond belief. Like this pink line here, it started doing okay, got back up to break even, then it just hemorrhaged money down here again. And that's like a 50k hand stretch, 100k hand stretch right there, that downswing. So these downswings are also like brutal. Downswings in this game can go on for like 100,000 hands easily, but that's impossible when you're playing in a good game. So again, say you're an 8bb winner let's say the game standard deviation is only 90 you're just not going to have that bad a downswing so this is night and day but no one really gets this and it's a huge problem in the industry that people don't talk about variance more it's such a debilitating thing look at this for example the probability of running at or above an observed win rate of zero because we left that blank over 400,000 hands with a true win rate of 8bb per 100 so that's the number you don't see but it's your true ability is 100% it's impossible for you to lose over 400,000 hands if you are an 8BB winner in a game like 100 Russian Cash that has roughly a 90 standard deviation, in my opinion. I could be wrong about these standard deviations, by the way. I'm estimating here based on what they've said and based on data I've seen in students' databases, but most students, I want to stress this again, most of you are going to have a really low standard deviation because most people are way too passive. So when you're playing passive poker, you have a low win rate and then you don't escape variance because your win rate's too low. Then when you start playing better poker, you have a higher win rate, but then your standard deviation goes up, so you don't fully escape variance either. So you get what I'm driving at here. Let's look at the 3BB winner again, over 400,000 hands in the 200 zoom game. Let's look at it in numbers. So the probability of running at or above observed win rate zero now, over 400,000 hands with a win rate of three is 95%. So one time in 20, you're still losing over that sample. One in 20 winning regs is losing over that sample. Now, if you reduce the sample down, you're a lower volume guy. You can only play 200,000 hands in a year. What does it say now? Only 87% that you're winning over 200,000 hands. If you play 100,000 hands, only 79% that you're winning. Only 79% of your 100k stretches are above zero. And if you play 50,000 hands, then there's only a 72% chance that you'll be above zero BB per 100. So 28% of the time, you have a negative BB per 100 showing after that sample. So I hope that answers some questions about how variance works. I hope it maybe steers you guys down the path to game selection where you can drive at a really high win rate. Maybe you try and avoid the really high standard deviation volatile games where you're reg battling. Reg battling is really silly. Like playing in a game that's super reg infested and tough is silly when there are other games available. 
Live games can be amazing. You can win double digits, just to summarize here. Softer sites can be amazing. Even if the rake is higher, like you're paying an extra couple of BB per 100 in rake, it might be that the game is soft enough that you're winning 5 BB extra and it's still worth it. So don't always play in the lowest rate game. That might not be the best game. Do look for rake pack. That can really help cushion your bankroll and, and help you avoid downswings or help take the edge off them. And definitely game select, site select. Be sensible, you know. Part of being a professional or semi-professional or even amateur, you know, recreational poker player is playing in a game that you think you can win in. And so it just doesn't make sense to put yourself in awful games. I'm sure there'll be loads of discussion on this in the comments section. Let me know if you think I've misinterpreted any of these standard deviations or something. Let me know what your own one is, for example. Let me know what your style is. And we can talk about this more. And I'll see you back here for another video really soon. It's carrotcorner.com for everything from us. Take it easy, guys. Bye for now.